cool. So I'm Luis from Aragon, and this is going to be a live demo. But uh, before the demo, I will just uh, tell you guys what Aragon is. Uh, are you guys familiar with decentralized autonomous organizations in the Ethereum or like the blockchain ecosystem? Can you guys you give me a signal if? OK, nice. Like around 25% of people are familiar. Um, basically, the concept of decentralized autonomous organizations is uh, organizations like entities that run on their own using a blockchain. So you can think about Bitcoin being the simplest one. Like Bitcoin is an entity that runs and basically it aligns incentives in a way that people are mining and they are putting computing power for Bitcoin to make it run, to make this organization run and be a part of this organization. But you can have much more comp uh, complex entities in which you do many other things. You can actually think of uh, creating a decentralized government or a decentralized open source project in which maintainers and contributors align to keep the organization, the, the open source project going. Um, so Aragon is a project in which we are focusing on creating tools for decentralized governance, for decentralized organizations. Uh, it's a community and a project, and there are multiple teams working on it. And uh, I'm just going to show how can we create like an organization like this in like 10 minutes. Cool. So basically, uh, what we have here is um, this is a bit zoomed out, so it doesn't look very sick. Oh, there it is. Cool, so basically what we have here is uh, Aragon. You can try it out at app.aragon.one. And we're going to create a decentralized organization that lives on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, right now on the testnet, which is one uh, other blockchain for testing purposes. Um, and it's unstoppable by default. No one can stop it. Uh, it's, it runs on the blockchain. It doesn't need approval from any government or bank to function or work. And it can be anything from a nonprofit to an, uh, a company or even any kind of organization that we cannot even think about today. So here you have a couple of templates that you can choose to make your life easier. Um, I will talk about this later, but you can essentially code any single, like every single kind of apps to create uh, your organization as you, as you wish and make it behave uh, like you want it to behave. But here we have a couple of templates. Uh, we're going to create, for example, one token project with democracy, which is basically a democracy, a democratic system in which token holders can vote on things. Um, and so we can name it, I don't know. Uh, we are going to call it, we are developers. This is like um, ENS name. For those unfamiliar with ENS, is uh, is the Ethereum name system. It's like a DNS system, but it's fully decentralized, not controlled by any single entity. And so we click Next. Uh, this is like the parameters for the template for the democracy um, organization. We're going to put here some dummy parameters. This is for like how, how, how much time the, the voting lasts and all of that. And we're going to call this, we are developers, and then the token is going to be called uh, WAB, for example. Cool. So now we have to sign the transactions here. So this is going to send data to the blockchain. Um, let's pray to the gods of the Ethereum blockchain for everything to work. Um, so you know, it takes time for the blocks to confirm. So um, now probably in 14 seconds or so, we'll have the organization created. This looks like it's like not doing much, but in the background it is creating an entire bunch of things. Like for example, a package manager that is completely decentralized. Um, and we use this package manager for serving these apps because if you are familiar with like systems like NPM, those systems are pretty cool for package management, but they are centralized. There's a server um, in which they basically can override uh, whatever you publish in their central repositories. So what we are doing here is we are using IPFS and Ethereum to create a package manager that is truly uncensorable and that uh, it runs whatever it happens. Um, so basically, this website you see here actually serves over IPFS. Um, so we have like a, like a bridge from the traditional web, because as you see, it's a .com, um, but basically bridges between the traditional DNS system and the, and the decentralized ENS system and the package manager we built on IPFS. So now the organization is ready, so we can just click Get Started. Um, and this is uh, the organization. So this uh, is an organization on Ethereum, and it has multiple functions, multiple apps. Uh, for example, a token manager. This token manager, uh, you can assign tokens to people, and these people will be able to vote in your democratic organization. So for example, this can be an open source project, and this can be the guy who creates the repo. Um, and since I love creating repos, and I think I deserve another token, I'm going to assign myself another token. What you see here is you may not have permissions to do certain things in our organization because, for example, not anyone, uh, not everyone in our organization should be able to withdraw funds, for example, from the organization's uh, vault or account or whatever. 
Um, so what we have created is something very similar to sudo in Linux uh, or in any Unix uh, environment where you have permission escalation. You can basically say, hey, um, you are not allowed to withdraw funds yourself, but if you go through a voting um, because the access control list of this organization is set in this specific way as a democracy, if you go through a voting, you may be able to actually withdraw funds to any account you want. So what you do is you say, hey, I want to perform this action. I don't have permission please do whatever is needed for me to perform this action. And in this case, it's going to create a voting on the blockchain, and we are going to be able to um, withdraw funds if the voting passes. So what will just happen here is that I, I did that, and then I also voted, because by default, if I open the action, it casts a vote by, by default. Um, so if we go to the voting app, obviously like everything takes time in the blockchain, so probably like in 10 seconds, that will be there. Um, but if, if we go to the voting app, we will be able to, to vote uh, if it's here already. Um, so nothing here, so let's just go to the finance app and then wait for the transaction to confirm and pray to the blockchain gods. Um, so th the finance app here is a, is a very simple app which lets you manage tokens. Um, there are uh, some tokens here. We can withdraw some like test tokens to just have something display in there. Uh, so this will airdrop some tokens to our address. You can see here your organization address. If you go to the uh, to the blockchain uh, to blockchain explorer, you will see well, if there's kind of ring is really faulty, um, but you can like you can on any ring node on the on the blockchain you can see this address, um, and you have addresses for the different apps. So if you want to send tokens to the token manager, um, if you want to see who is voting on the voting app and all of that. Um, so if we go back to voting, we should see the voting that just opened, and it actually confirmed because I, I'm the only one voting in this organization, so it's really kind of a democracy right now. Um, and what, what happened is that uh, I assigned a token to myself. So if we go here, we'll see that I have two tokens now. Pretty cool. Um, and then the finance app, we can also do the same. We can say, hey, uh, well, right now the DAO doesn't have any funds. Um, so we could do the same and we could say, hey, I want to withdraw some funds, but I don't have the permission to, so I'm gonna open a voting. Um, the cool thing about all of this is, uh, this is like a governance structure, this is an organization, this is what you know a company or an NGO or whatever would resemble. But the cool thing is that we can program them with code, thanks to smart contracts in Ethereum. So I'm gonna demo uh, something that we've been building, which is um, basically some CLI tool to actually create organizations and create apps, because you may want to create an app that automatically uh, gets all your finances from your organization and reports those to like a tax authority or whatever. Or you may want to create um, an app for managing Git repos. Actually, someone built this, built an app that is a decentralized Git repo system uh, using Aragon. And so basically, you can go through like voting processes to like update, I don't know, your code base or create new branches, merge pull requests. And if you merge this with a token manager, you can give tokens to people who are contributing to your open source project. And basically, you can create like a fully um, sort of incentivized environment for an open source project, which I'm very excited about because open source sustainability is a big issue today. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up a, an Aragon app. Uh, it's going to be a basic counter Aragon app that will be count, uh, I don't know, something uh, from 0 to 1, 1, 2, whatever. Um, but it will do so in a way that is, uh, you can plug it with any other app, for example, the voting app. So you can only increment the counter if there is a voting and token holders approve that voting. So let's do this. Um, we do here Aragon init, and it can be like a test, uh, like a we are developers. And then we do init. Uh, it will clone the React boilerplate, so you can create like a React app by default with, with this. Um, and so I don't have much time remaining, so I hope internet works great. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do is I don't, don't want to wait for NPM to install packages, and I'm going to go to this app that I already had set up. So I'm going to do Aragon run, and this is going to create all of the good stuff for me. You need IPFS, you need a local Ethereum network, um, and deploy the apps, deploy the decentralized organization, deploy everything, and run a local instance of Aragon in which I will be able to see my app. So this is building the front end, using Yarn, NPM, whatever you have installed. Um, then publishing files to IPFS, which is happening right now. Um, it's a local IPFS, of course. And now, here we go. We have a fully functional instance of Aragon with, uh, with our app installed. So let's check it out. It should be in 
this URL here. So I'm going to copy and paste. Here we go. Cool, so it's loading apps. And here we go, that's our counter app. So it's a basic counter app. You can increment, decrement. Um, but if you increment, as you see here, it takes to this beautiful screen in which you can sign transactions. And if you have like the voting app installed, you could configure the access control list, which is like this list that I was talking about, similar to how permission escalation works on Unix. And you could say, hey, to increment the counter, you need to go through a voting. And there is this guy who has veto power over this action. Or you know, uh, if, the, if you increment this counter here, what will happen is that you will be rewarded with tokens. You can really get very complex into, into these things. Um, so just to wrap up here, um, I think this is a very I think this is a very powerful way to create um, organizations and experiment with software. Um, I want to say that we have a grants program for people working on these things. Uh, it's, I think it's very important that we reward people that are working on these open source components. Uh, that are sort of very basic for the blockchain infrastructure to switch from hype to actually something that can be good for people and used for people around the world. Um, we are working on making Aragon like a movement more than a company. We are, as I said, a community and an open source project, basically, and then everything else comes afterwards. We have companies, teams working on Aragon, uh, but itself is like an open source movement sort of thing. And our hope is that we can experiment with governance, with creating organizations at the same speed we can iterate with software, um, hopefully with a lot of uh, tests everywhere so we don't break things. Um, but the idea is that you can create organizations, you can plug your apps as you could plug them in, you know, in the traditional uh, like software development world. But these organizations, this software can actually incentivize people in different ways and organize them in different ways to create something wonderful and do things, for example, such as uh, make open source fully sustainable by default and, and stuff like that, which I'm super excited about. So that's it. You can, you can go to aragon.org to know more about the project, app.aragon.one, and we are hiring, so come and talk to us. Thank you.